On this episode of Road Dirt, we ride the 2023 Triumph Bonneville Bobber, and we take a look at the history of the bobber genre. Stay tuned. Hey, this is Rob with Road Dirt, and we are on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. We are up in Toccoa, Georgia, at Camp Curahi at Toccoa. Camp Curahi is um, the original um, home of the um, paratroopers of the 506th uh, Paratroop Division in Second World War, of which the Band of Brothers Easy Company was a part of. They're actually rebuilding uh, original barracks here and um, it's at the foot of uh, Mount Curahi, and they're rebuilding a C-47, which is a type of plane that they jumped out of um, over, um, over the beaches of Normandy, inland, to capture bridges, and then later in the Operation Market Garden. And, um, but we're here really to do a story on a motorcycle genre that was birthed out of the Second World War. What, it was really the first, uh, custom motorcycle craze or trend, so to speak, um, if you think of it that way, and it's called the Bobber, of which the Triumph Bonneville Bobber 1200 is kind of an homage to it. And uh, servicemen, sailors, uh, soldiers, other branches of the service, other all different kinds of um, types of service within those branches, men, and I guess some women too, came back after the Second World War and the United States had a surplus of Indians and Harley Davidsons and other brands, uh, that had, bikes that had contributed to the war effort. And soldiers would come back, buy these bikes for like, you know, a few hundred dollars sometimes max. And then they would chop the, the, the front fenders, chop the rear fenders, strip off all of the, the luggage, the hardware, the you know, the um, uh, windshields, things like that. And they would call it bobbing. They call them bobbing the bike and chop them all down and strip them down just for these straight up road bikes like this. My father actually had one. He had an early uh, Triumph, um, a uh, Tiger 500 that, that he got. And by the time he got it, it had been chopped and, and the, the uh, frame had been chromed and the tank was like a like a pink peanut tank on it wasn't even stock so that whole bobber craze of the late 40s into the early 50s continued and would eventually give birth to the the chopper craze with the raked out front end over in england you know the uh, cafe racer craze things like that but really it all started with servicemen coming back from the war and bobbing bikes of which this is kind of a commemorative edition of that. So, we're gonna do a little story on the uh, history of the bobber and Triumph's homage to that whole genre. All right, a little background first. By definition, a bobber or a bob job is a motorbike that's been stripped of extraneous bodywork like its windshields, saddlebags, other add-ons, in an effort to reduce weight and improve performance. The term was actually derived from bobtail, which was a practice of removing the tail of an animal. So it was applied to motorcycles when the front and or rear fenders were cut or removed entirely. Now, many trace the origins of the bobber to the post-World War II years, like I alluded to at the beginning of this video, but in actuality, it can be argued that the genre had its origins even earlier. In the 1920s, riders in the United States created the cut down, whereby they would remove the front fender, cut and short the rear fender, remove any unnecessary elements of a JD model or J series Harley Davidson to make it lighter and improve the handling of it. Often the frame would be modded, lowering the seat tube and shortening the wheelbase, visually creating a sweeping diagonal line from the steering head to the rear axle. By 1933, the AMA established Class C racing, stating that only catalog racing motorcycles could be run in sanctioned competition. Now these stripped down 
factory racers like the Indian Daytona Scout and the Harley WR would become the inspiration for what would be called the Bob Job, as road riders copied the racers' looks and characteristics for their street legal machines. The Bob Job continued to evolve across the 1950s and 60s, and the moniker was soon shortened to Bobber. Yet a certain look and vibe was always retained, stripped down, streamlined, simplified, and personalized. My father rode a 1954 Triumph Tiger 500 Bobber as a teenager in the late 1950s, which I've written about before on RoadDirt.tv. We've never actually found any photos of it, but he always gave its description as, quote, chromed frame from end to end, no front fender, and only enough rear for a short pillion pad, no speedo, a non-triumph pink peanut tank, stripped and bobbed, end quote. The bobber genre has endured, even as other custom styles seem to ebb and flow over the years. Back in 2016, Triumph Motorcycles decided to capture the flair and feel of the bobbers post-World War II era by creating their own bobber based on their 1200cc parallel twin T120 Bonneville series. They began to sell them in early 2017 and the bike remains a staple in their modern classic lineup to this day, sporting a solo seat a swing cage mounted to a monoshock under the seat giving the appearance of a floating hardtail, spoked rims and slash cut low pipes out either side, the Triumph Bobber certainly evokes the storied history of the genre. Triumph Bobber 1200 Parallel Twin Mill makes 76 horsepower and 78 foot-pounds of torque, but out riding it, the Bobber feels like it's making more, much more. Roaring up through the six-speed gearbox, Phil and I both had a chance to ride it um, over a couple of weeks, and we both found that six kind of feels like an overdrive. The bike pulls hard up through each gear, roars nicely through those slash-cut throats. I wasn't shifting into six until almost 75, 80 miles an hour quite a few times, as that seemed to be the sweet spot. The gearing forces the rider to shift further up in the rev range than some of the brand's other modern classic offerings, as it feels like it kind of lugs a little bit in each gear if you short shift it like a lot of Cruiser and Harley riders do. So take this machine higher up in the revs as you shift through the gears and you'll be rewarded with its brute strength. The seat height is slammed super low at just over 27 and a half inches, but um, those flat bars out in front, they're 31.5 inch handlebars, had me pulled over the tank a little bit, even with the foot pegs right underneath me. It, it's not a super comfortable all day ride for me. And the short um, tank, uh, it's a, kind of a peanut tank, holds just over 3.6 gallons of gas, but they claim it makes about 55 miles per gallon, so you should get about 180, 190 miles out of a tank. That's what we've been getting out of it. Which is fine, really, because given that uh, single mono shock underneath the rear seat, which is a jackhammer, you're gonna need to get off and uh, do some self-chiropractic between fuel stops. I mean, it's a bobber, it's not a tourer. It's bobber in name and in its genre. So it's a day rider. So I'm guessing riders who want a road trip won't be interested in this bike. The bobber is for another rider, one who wants to connect to an earlier time in motorcycling, wants to ride a simple, stripped down, elemental motorcycle, or maybe just to kind of be in touch with a time long past and a loved one long past, like I do with my father's memory. For that, this bike is perfect. So there you have it, a brief history of the bobber genre of custom motorcycles and a little bit about 2023 Triumph Bobber, paying homage to that whole genre of motorcycling. So we've enjoyed our time with this and I've enjoyed getting to research a little bit of the history behind the bobber. It really predates, really, the uh, 1940s and 1950s post-World War II bobbers. When you really go back into the 1920s and 1930s and the the original cut downs, the original bob jobs of the 1930s 
and the races that they participated in that they were often stripped down for. And then how they uh, became, um, you know, kind of a craze and a fad among street riders. So it's um, been a fun little journey we've taken together. Hey, if you're interested in um, some photos and a little bit more of a write-up that we have on the hist brief history of the bobber, you can find that at roaddirt.tv. And uh, you can like and subscribe there so you can get regular notifications about all of our posts on that site. As well as subscribe here. Subscribe to the, Ro to the Road Dirt um, TV YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, share, leave some comments. We'd love to dialogue with you. Let us know what you think about this and other videos. And ring the bell so that you can get notifications about future, future content as well. Hope you'll look us up on social media as well. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All of those are Road Dirt TV. And uh, we've got a weekly podcast also called uh, Road Dirt over on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, all of the uh, podcast platforms. You can find it there. Look for Road Dirt. And uh, we've got a Spotify music playlist as well, about 25 hours worth of music for when you're out on the open road or you're wrenching on it in your garage. So um, until next time, hey, this is Rob with Road Dirt. Ride life. Thank you.